Here in Germany at the Aero Friedrichshafen show, the site is just packed wall to wall with light aircraft. But the one behind me, the Velis Electro, is a little bit special. As the name suggests, it's an electrically powered aircraft. And Pipistrel, which is part of Textron, which makes this aircraft, is trying to change the way people experience light aviation. In fact, change the way some people learn to fly. We're going to get you a lot more detail on how that works. We're also going to talk to my colleague, Amy Wilder. She's a pilot and she's flown the Velis Electro. We're standing in front of the Pipistrel Velis Electro, the world's first, but still the only fully type certified electric airplane. Excellent. So obviously the key difference is the, is the propulsion system, the, the fact that we're not using uh, fossil-based fuel here. Tell us why that matters, why your company really has put so much effort into this. Pipistrel started 15 years ago electrifying airplanes with our first electric flight on a glider uh, and ever since has been just evolving with technology, evolving with batteries, evolving with understanding of how this works and certification ultimately culminating to the, the certification of the Velis Electro. And there's a few things that matters. There's no fuel on board, there's zero emissions, but it's also very efficient, right? It's powered by a Pipistrel electric motor on the front, very, very quiet, which makes a big impact on aviation disruption into the community, which is also important, and powered by two high voltage batteries that are also built and designed uh, at Pipistrel. We're less than 60 dBs. If the airplane flies overhead, you barely hear it. When you're inside the cockpit, you can have a conversation with your co-pilot, and, and which is not the same when you have a piston engine. And so the noise factor is a big impact. The decarbonization is a big impact, but it's also less uh, costly to operate. I had the opportunity to take a demo flight in this aircraft at Oshkosh a couple years ago. So I had the opportunity to taxi, do a couple of laps in the pattern, and then go out and um, fly some maneuvers in the aircraft. Was this your first electric aircraft? This was my first electric aircraft, and I believe my only electric aircraft experience so far. And the physical feel of sitting in the cockpit is immediately different from being in, say, a Cessna 172 or a Cessna 150, which is what pilots are used to, you know, standard trainer aircraft that have been around since the 1950s and 60s. What are the first sort of differences you notice in terms of how you interact with the controls? Yeah. So climbing in and out of the aircraft is immediately a different experience. There's some really nice features in this aircraft. It's more ergonomically designed to suit the pilot's body. You'll notice that I'm kind of sitting with my legs in front of me instead of down below, which actually makes it a little easier to operate the rudder pedals. And then of course, you you know, standard stick and rudder skills. The instrument panel is very familiar for anybody who's flown a light trainer aircraft. You've got your altimeter, your inclinometer, your airspeed indicator. You've got magnetic compass up here, which is very familiar. Um, there's a few differences. Basically, you've got your engine monitoring system, which you kind of keep an eye on the battery. The applications that we've been targeting or that have been, I'd say, most successful in implementing the Velis are, are a different range. There's everything from small amount of tourism to just, just uh, club flying or individuals flying, but the most applicable has been pilot training, right? and the most successful has been pilot training, and the majority of the, air, the airplanes that we've delivered around the world have gone into more training environment than others, because the initial training, the, uh, 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 the initial pilot skills, we can do it on, a, on an airplane that flies for 45, 50 minutes, uh, and really learn piloting skills in a really nice environment. It is incredibly quiet right away on startup. You don't have the combustion engine noise. There's a little sound from the propeller, of course, but really it's not very noticeable. Taking off, it has a pretty short takeoff run and it flies once you're in the air, basically like a 172, a one, probably more comparable to a 150 or so, 152. So would you say on, you know, given like for like flying conditions, you know, depending on how bumpy the air is that day, does it sort of feel fundamentally the same as a, as a piston? It feels fundamentally the same. There are some differences in the controls where, you know, a Cessna, you can sort of release the controls and it will kind of maintain what it's doing. In this airplane, it kind of tends to want to either descend or climb. You kind of have to keep an eye on it. I found so it was a little touchier on the controls. But other than that, you know, it, it just feels like flying an airplane. So you could go out and train in this airplane and the skills 
that you take are transferable to any other aircraft. So tell us about, you know, roughly speaking, how many deliveries you've made so far and wh where those aircraft have gone. Sure. Uh, last year we celebrated the 100th airplane delivery, and so we're above that number today. We've delivered into over 20 countries around the world where we have them operating. We continue to work on validations in different countries. Uh, we had, uh, in 2024, the FAA came through with an exemption to the LSA rules that allows the VELUS to be airworthy as an LSA, therefore flight schools can use it in the United States today, which is a big uh, step forward. We validated in other countries like Mexico and working on, on continued validations, but uh, you know, over 120 or so around the world operating in, I'd say, mostly training environment, but different types of, of uh, industry as well. Are, are all of these manufactured in Europe for now, or, or do you produce some in the States? Today, they're 100% manufactured in Slovenia and final assembly in Italy and Europe at our Pipistrol uh, factory. And then on on electric propulsion itself. Of course, some people look at electric aviation and they say, oh, the batteries just aren't ready. We have to wait till the perfect batteries are here. You didn't do that. You just said, we'll work with whatever batteries we've got now. Do you feel kind of validated in, in that decision? And do you see a day when the battery technology does advance, as it inevitably will, that you'll be you'll have an advantage. You'll be already in this market and you can offer more performance. Yes, definitely we see it as a a big advantage that we are this far ahead or this far forward, I'd say, in electric aviation. And yes, we had to select a battery technology that was available at the time when we froze the configuration for certification. In aviation, the regulatory side is, is very uh, heavy, and it's, uh, rightfully so, so it takes time to certify, which means it's hard to implement very quick innovation turns, right, if that makes sense. And so it's hard for us to bring a new battery cell into the, 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 the Velus very quickly. But we will continue to monitor. We have a very good understanding of all of the different cells. We're already on the generation two cell here on the airplane. We have plans to go to the next generation cell here shortly. So it's, uh, it's something that electric aviation will have to be able to uh, progress as battery technology progresses as well.